Hey, what's up YouTube? It's Mo here. Today I'll be upgrading my early 2011 MacBook Pro that had originally 4GB of RAM and 500GB hard drive. First I started by putting this decal on it, vinyl decal, because I really dislike the aluminum. The, like, it feels really weird whenever I'm using it, like I scratched the metal and it's just like a really rough metal. And plus it was getting really old and it just didn't look that pretty. So I put this decal on it mainly for the inside of it not the outside because the outside will be covered with something else anyways um it went great i bought it for ten dollars from amazon and i'll link it down below so first i flipped the computer backside up there are 10 screws in total four on the long sides and two on the short sides the three screws all the way on top are super long they're not like the other screws so make sure you know which screws goes where. I recommend that you mark them somewhere on a piece of paper. First thing you'll need to do is disconnect the battery before doing anything else. Second, we'll take out the RAM and then we'll take out the hard drive and we'll take out the optical drive. All right, battery's out. In order to take out the RAM, there's two clips on the side. Just open them left and right, just like so. And you'll be able to pull out the RAM. See, this is the old RAM, it's two gigabytes each for a total of four. It's being replaced with these two sticks, eight gigabytes each for a total of 16. That's four times the RAM that was originally in there. So the pins have a small, like there's a small short side and there's a long side. Make sure that you line the small side with the small side and the large side with the large side. And of course you'll put the bottom RAM first and then you'll put the top one. You're keeping the battery off until you finish the whole setup. So there are three connectors over the optical drive. You want to disconnect those first. One of them is for the hard drive. The other one is for the optical drive. And then another one is for the, for the speakers. So you want to disconnect those first. And then you're going to want to unscrew this little mount between the optical drive and the hard drive. And there's only two screws. Once you take that off, you'll be able to take the hard drive out. Just don't pull it out because it's still attached. You want to carefully take off that little connector from the hard drive. Make sure you, you don't pull it from the wire. Once you remove that, there are two small screws holding that ribbon cable in place. You want to take those out. Quick plug here. I want to remind you to give this video a thumbs up if you find it useful. There are also a couple of screws holding the optical drive on both sides and behind that small black speaker thing. And that's it, the optical drive comes right off. If you want to replace the optical drive or the hard drive, you need to buy one of these cases. I bought this one from Amazon for $8. The little connector that was already originally connected to the optical drive, you want to take that out also very carefully. And you're going to install it in this new thing that you just got. We'll put the computer on the side for now until we extract the hard drive. In this case, I'll be using a two terabyte Seagate external hard drive to put in there. And it fits right in just the same size as the optical drive. I picked this external drive from Best Buy about a year and a half to two years ago for like $130 and it's two terabytes. If you buy a hard drive, you can put it as two terabytes now, it's, it's at least over $500. So I'll be saving a lot of money doing this. I didn't have a heat gun at the time, so I just used my wife's blow dryer and you just want to pry it each side very carefully. The top section is metal, the rest of the casing is plastic. so. You want to heat up the metal so that the glue could soften a little bit where you can stick something in there and open it. Again, be careful. Don't just stab the plastic because then you'll be probably using it again later. I'll show you how. See, two terabytes right there, Seagate. It comes in this little foil thing. You're gonna peel that off. You see, and it's a regular hard drive. You need to take that out. Do not pull it from the motherboard because then it'll break. What I did was I put a little flat head screw 
right there between the pins and the plastic and I just pulled up little by little until I got it loose enough for me to use my hands to take it out. And again, don't throw this out because we'll use it later. What you could do actually is put it on the old hard drive that you extracted from your computer and put the whole thing in the case that you just opened up and again you can use it as an external hard drive as a time machine or something for your computer see now it fits right in that optical drive there are screws that you screw it in place and there you go a 2000 gigabyte hard drive At this point, we're gonna just do everything that we did before in reverse. The optical drive goes in. Now, with the two terabytes in it, I'm just gonna speed it up a little bit. So before this computer had a 500 gigabyte hard drive, and now it will have a two terabyte in the optical drive and a one terabyte Samsung SSD. This should improve the performance of the computer immensely. In order for you to use the full potential of the 16 gigabytes, even though Apple only recommends 8 gigabytes, you could still use 16 and the reason you could do that is now if you sold the SSD, now you'll, you'll get the full potential of the 16 gigabytes of RAM. So you put those four screws that you took out from the other hard drive in the new SSD, put the hard drive back in place and re-clamp it with that little clamp. Once you're done, reconnect all the ribbons. One, two, and three. Check. Reconnect the battery. Check. Put the back cover on, and before you screw anything in, just open the computer, make sure everything is running, because maybe you forgot to do something. Music to my ears. So now, on that two terabyte hard drive, I had a time machine so I restored from that it took me like 25 minutes and this is me logging on for the first time sure next 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 even though this video is fast it's fast forwarded the computer is actually going blazingly fast right now like I click this utility and it opened up right away before I would have had to wait at least 45 seconds and as you can see here one hard drive says two terabytes and these are all the partitions in that two terabyte hard drive that I was using before and that's that time machine I was telling you about and there's the one terabyte SSD that has the system on it you'll see that it'll say 16 gigabytes so it's all registered and both hard drives are also registered two slots eight gigabytes each so I ran a hard drive desk before the upgrade, it was reading 58.8 read and 58.7 write. I ran the same test after installing the both hard drives and I was honestly shocked with the results. It read 492.4 write and 504.4 read. I also ran a Geek Benchmark and the numbers were pretty impressive. I wanted to run a 3D or a graphics benchmark and this is the only one that I was found online. I'm not sure how accurate it is. The first time I ran the test before the upgrade, it read 246 CB. I'm not even sure what CB stands for. After the upgrade, it read 249 CB. What I did notice performance is that whenever I open up a program, whether it's Mail or Photoshop or Final Cut Pro, it opens with such ease so quickly, like literally no problem whatsoever. And that's the beauty about the SSD paired with 16 gigabytes of RAM is that it is able to pull those programs, pull those files really quickly those small transactions, it's fantastic. To be honest, I'd much rather spend $500 and upgrade this 2011 computer than go out and buy the same specifications from Apple in a 2018 version that would cost me $3,000. And it wouldn't have all the connectivity options that this computer has. I don't need to upgrade 2018 for no reason. They're both i7, they're both 16 gigabytes, they both have one terabyte of SSD only mine has two terabytes of additional storage the only difference is my i7 is second generation the newest one is i7 seventh generation i'm sure there's a small difference there but it's not 
a big enough difference that would make me want to go out and spend three thousand dollars all right guys i really hope you enjoyed this video um if you liked it make sure you give it a thumbs up if you have any questions leave them in the comment section down below and if you want to see more videos like this make sure you hit that subscribe button